welcome to the show. It's all happening. There's a press conference at Downing Street at 5 with Boris Johnson. We'll be taking that live. As you'll now know, the whole of the West Midlands in Tier 3. This is about the sort of seventh time we've been to this town, isn't it? Already it's easily the strangest. Excuse me. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, we'll we talk to you for a minute. What about? Life. This series has always tried to get beyond numbers and metrics, preferring chance encounters and moments of raw humanity. I'd love a hug. Nine months of social distancing and lockdowns has been the opposite of all that. So we've decided to come off Zoom and talk to people face to face about life in this crisis. The precautions we have to take. I don't like these. These are very Hannibal Lecter. I don't think you can ask cops people to talk to them wearing that, can you? It's just not right. <laughs> Roger, talk to you for a minute. Roger, shit. It's like a living hell with this carpet. Yeah, yeah you can't get nowhere. It's like nowhere. a living hell with this carpet. You, you ain't earning no money. I'm coming to the armless, you know. I'm stopping my brother. That's my brother there. You're homeless at the moment? Yeah. What were you doing? Um, working in a factory, metal work. I'm just uh, following the rules, like not a lot of other people. Not a lot of other people? you think on balance it won't work? No, I don't think it was worth it at all. See, I'm 50. I worry <laughs> a bit more about, about it maybe than you do. I mean, my mum and my mum and dad are round about your age, and my mum and dad... <laughs> Thanks for that. Great. <laughs> Glad I met you. <laughs> I think it shouldn't be closing everything down now. Life's too short, Amy. My mental health's gone down the nick a bit. Well, a lot. My, my mental has been affected, and like no one's asked like. I'll, well, I'll ask you if you don't mind. I mean, how have you been? Very lonely. I feel like I didn't have anyone to talk to. Like. I, I get scared to come out. Really? I'd have to come by and in a really bad depression. And if it weren't for my kids coming to fetch me to come out, I don't know what I'd do. I'd just disappear. I think. This isn't some sort of. I don't think people think of this as some bolt from the blue that turned everything upside down. It's like one more thing. And this is the biggest thing so far. Um, so what are you guys... Uh, we work for The Guardian, the newspaper. OK, what are you asking questions we about? We come about Covid and whatever. Yeah, it's, lockdown's been a beggar's nightmare. Has it? Well, I busk a lot, really. But um, nobody carries cash anymore, do they? It's made it impossible some days to pay for somewhere to stay each night and stuff like that. It's, I've been sleeping in a tent a lot of the time. If I was to ask you right now what you need, what would you say? <laughs> Some support, really. But no, more, more than that, I guess companionship. In the past, Walsall has told us what happens when people feel disempowered and treated like a number. Well, people are struggling, and when look, look happen, and this, that, the other, and then they're struggling, and they, they get the kids took off them because they go on the wrong way. Benefit the benefit, the benefit cap and that, yeah. Well, it caused me and my partner to split up, and that was what about politics? Story. I think now's the time it's a big fix to be fair. But We're all think screwed then, aren't we? Yeah, there's, I think there's quite a few of us that feel the same, like, you know what I mean? Now it feels like a warning that rebuilding human connections is more urgent than a lot of people realise. I miss my friends. You did. Time. So we did the best we could with him. Um, but didn't obviously see anybody except me, his dad, and a baby for six months as well. Oh. So socially. The, that's where he missed out. The baby he doesn't know what facial expressions look like because he sees everybody behind a mask. He's not been able to socialise with any babies his own age at all. Hiya. I want to keep him. Oh, oh no. I really don't want them to keep hearing about all the work they've missed and all the things they've got to catch up on. The big thing that they've missed out on is being together, socialising. It has been going wrong for some time, I think, before COVID even. You know, when they're tested in four out of the seven primary years, formal statutory tests, it's not what they need. Because next summer, after all of this anxiety and maybe trauma in some cases, SATs are coming around the corner as usual. Yeah. These tougher tears strike a balance. They're sufficient. It's been a long day. We've got to see something that's very hard to find in the midst of this crisis. Music. There's a band rehearsing in a pub somewhere. It's a 
big, big blow. You know, personally, I've already lost the whole of November, December, and now I'm also having to lose January. Wow. We're talking over 50, 60 shows. That's just, that's just myself. You know, there's multiple promoters and multiple venues. You know, it's going to cost the, the Birmingham economy millions of pounds. That's true, but it also, do you know what I mean? Music, you need music to live. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, you do. I already feel quite moved. Been this deathly silence for nine months, and this is like a little break in it, isn't it? A little reminder of what the world used to sound like. How's it going? All right, it's the first time I've heard live music in about a year. Hey man, what a shame it's us, isn't it? It's fucking <laughs> <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? And, uh, you worry about this place then? Well, definitely. Well, the small yeah. venues have gone, and the only place you can go is somewhere that offers a safe show mm. for people in yellow shirts. My worry is that the, we're just people will have nowhere to play. I mean, it's like, say, imagine teenagers, uh, a very formative year of their life when they would start going out to see their first gigs. Yeah. What a thing to miss. It, I mean, people like us and venues like this, you know, we've, we've been getting kicked up the arse for the last 10 years, <laughs> of like, like it not working. I mean, we've got to think about how we get European visas in January and like our main source of income, which shows in Europe is just that's next as well. I mean, that's a completely yeah, separate. going to be a big help. <laughs> away from that. Like on a on a more positive note, with people like us are nothing if not resourceful, and we'll make it work. Whether it's yeah, warehouses yeah. and car parks and fuck knows what. Yeah. yeah you see. Can we have that? How have you yeah. been in nine months of silence? How's your life? On the doll, mate. You need a year's worth of tax returns to show, and I haven't been self-employed for that long. Yeah, I was doing really well for myself. It was picking up. It was doing well. This happened. I lost everything. And I've got a missus and two kids, mate, so it's not just me. <laughs> so I've got, now I've got a really angry missus and two disappointed children. Yeah. And you must just miss the... I miss it all, mate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I've, got, I've got the best job in the world, really, is that mean? But yeah, yeah, I miss it all. Well, it'll be all right. It's a thriving city and there's just nobody around. It's just delivery drivers everywhere, isn't it? Sad, isn't it? Listen. It's Friday morning in Manchester. I spent a huge amount of my teens and twenties here, right? And it took 40 years of work to turn this part of town around. And it was just all about all the businesses that are now shut. Look at it. It's dead, isn't it? Yeah. It's weird. Well, I just wonder how's life. You're obviously still working. It's been busier than ever. Has it? Yeah. The building industry seems to be moving, but... It's horrible. Is it? Yeah. Go on. The very first lockdown, we was really busy because we was the only place open in town. When lockdown come off, it was... Nobody come back to work, did they? Everybody said all the offices are closed. You worried? Yeah, yeah. We won't last till April. You won't last till April. And if they say, oh, well, we have to do this to save the NHS and protect people's lives and all that. Nice village. Beautiful pub. People get together and it's just what life's about. If you want to come in, you're more than welcome. No, we're gonna we have to be masked up. Yeah, what do you think? Well, this is a lovely place. She gets very busy and she gets we we have live music, you name it, we do it. Well we talk about the pub like a ship, you call it she. She, because she's mine, she's a girl. Well you're in she, tier three, right? But yeah, we can't open. But even if it was tier two. Even if it was tier two, we couldn't open because we don't do food, we're just a wet house. You know, this is when you close your community pub, things like this stop. Customers have brought donations in. This is what your community pub does. This is where people come to get help. This is where people come to grieve. So we take the mask off, so we go and sit in the, you can bear the cold. Yeah. Why? This is where lads come in and get, get work. Do you know what I mean? There's always somebody in a pub that wants a job doing in the house. This is where people get to know each other. This government carries on the way it's doing. 
your historical English country pub. Do you know what I mean? It will be gone. And do you think about closing down? Is that cross it thinks your mind? about I think about it every day. But for the love of God, she won't close. I'll do me damnedest, do you know what I mean, to keep her open. My mum had her weight there, God rest her soul. In the I mean, in the, in the Villa Greens, yeah. It's just, look. It needs sprucing up. It does need sprucing up, livelying up. You know what I mean? You don't see anything anymore. Nothing for the kids to play on. Yeah, booming, thriving Manchester's only 10 minutes drive down there. Yeah. yeah. Why does that happen? Money talks. Last question. How are you voting in this referendum? Out. Out. They're all voting in in town. Of course they will. They've got that. I'm interested to see what's changed, if anything. She talked about the playground, remember? Well, that goalpost, you filmed that goalpost. And no one's taken care of any of that in four years, right? No, it's the same as it was in the summer of 2016. This is where the Billy Green was. That was it, this is the remains of it. Christ, that used to be a pub. Well, we often used to say, didn't we? We were often said, right, in doing these films, that people always said, Places that voted for Brexit, perhaps were disadvantaged, but left behind. That was the cliche, wasn't it? But you and I always had the sense that what those places had experienced, you know, the rest of us were somehow about to experience. It was at the cutting edge. Yeah, and that's very real here because Collyhurst is smattered with disused pubs. You know, places that once were at the heart of the community. Hello. Can we talk to you? Can we talk to you for a minute? As part of something called the Northern Gateway Project, there are plans to redevelop this area and build hundreds of new houses. But questions about who will benefit and what will happen to the existing community are impossible to ignore. I want it to be a new collier for the, for the kids what are growing up now, young kids. What's it like? It's horrible, it's an horrible estate. Like, see now Ancoats, now it's all been renewed. That's what needs to happen around here. All masonettes at the back round there, they've pulled all these down, they've been down for a few years now. And there was a pub there as well? Yeah, wasn't it? right here on the grass here. The Billy, Billy, Greens. Billy Greens pub, yeah. That is me local, they had me 21st birthday in there. And how's life been for you over the last nine months with Covid and all? It's been horrible, it's been horrible. Like over, over there, like where you can see Eastford Square, the shops and that. Like that was all a nice cafe in that three, four or five years ago. Sunbed shop, news agents. Veg store, a lot, it's all been closed, been closed for years. We just want to see a change around here now, and I think most people do. Are you working at the minute? No, not at the minute, no. When did you last have a job? I was working on building sites about seven months ago. God, and how are you in yourself? All right, I'm all right, you know, just keeping myself to myself, been doing my own thing, really. Do you want to walk over the shopping tray? Which is not quite what it appears in the sense, the reason that's empty is pending development. But it's a lot of pending and no development, isn't it? Well, can we talk to you for a minute? <laughs> What's it like going up around here? Oh, right, everyone it's all said right. it's just no, in that no. you don't need to make what you make of it. We were here four years ago and that was, that was in like exactly the same that state. Is. You should knock that down and put a little Tesco Express, it'll make more from it, you just sat there. Well, right what there. we don't understand is, it's like, if you go into town now, you still have people out homeless. Yeah. Are you working? Not at the moment, been the redundant. I was working at a recycling place. But... And do you think it's been worth it? Lockdown and shutting the shops and... Nah, not really. Do you? I'm not sure. I don't think, I just think it's a little bit crud to be honest. What, the virus? Yeah. Go on. I've known people that have passed away and they've put coronavirus on the death certificate. Because it's should... underlying health conditions, it's a flu in it. That's what they're calling it, but it's attacking people who's always got underlying health conditions. Do you know anyone who's died from it? Uh, no, I know people who've had it. I know people who've had what they call long COVID well, who are still feeling it's terrible. It's like a flu, so there's no really need for lockdown, innit? So why, why, why do you think, why do you the, think it's happening? In, in the long run, though, all this, it's just, it's just ruining the economy for everyone else, like people that have got their own businesses, everything. You know what I mean? Obviously, like Tesco's and all them are all right. It's the little businesses, innit? Barber shops, they all survive, definitely, because everyone needs their hair cut. But all the little restaurants and that, they're not going to be able to open again, innit? I think... I think as the time goes on, they're just going to have everything online. 
only work that you're going to end up getting is in these big factories that have to support like Amazon sort all, all that out. Do you know what I mean? That's how it's getting going to end up. Getting with the cash, aren't they? Everything's going to be yeah. online. Everything's digital, computerised. They know everything that also, you're doing. Also, it's all that up there. 5G network, all that conspiracy as well. Just don't believe what you believe in it. You know, you don't know what to believe, though, do you? They tell you one thing and then another thing comes on. What about the vaccine when it comes well, out? Like you, got, you know what you're going to get a vaccine for? Because we're going to get microchips, so when we go through airports, doctors, everywhere like that, we can all get scanned so it's all easier. So, when, every, so, uh, so when, like, when the, whatever it is, a postcard or a letter lands on your doorstep next spring and says, right, it's time for you to get vaccinated, presumably you're not going to do it. And, nah, I don't, not really, no. You've got someone you might like to speak to. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's not on the news, it's on the internet, the Guardian, Guardian the newspaper. Right, yeah, yeah. She got made redundant after eight years of employment and then when she went to Universal Credit she went two months without any money. Yeah, but don't have you on a camera. Thank have you. a nice day. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. See you later, mum. Thanks very much, man. I don't know what to say about that. What's interesting about conspiracies, for me anyway, is where it, is it, it's the conditions that give rise to it, right? I know what you mean, that the, the, the combination of that and what they say is somehow very powerful for reasons I can't quite articulate, but... Well, they're talking about the New World Order and how everything's gone online, right, and it's sweeping away everything. But it's just that that's just a, that's a, a story that accounts for all the change in the world, isn't it? There's something comparable to Brexit, and I'm not sure quite what it is, but Brexit was just about the idea that the people in charge were not listening and were, and were sort of caught up in their own projects. And you've got a sort of more extreme version of that four years on, which is that the pandemic is just is all about this quest to completely remake the world. But it's also peppered with sort of truths, isn't it? Which I'm is not the, sure whether it's peppered with truths. Well, it is. Oh, Amazon, right? Amazon are sort of taking over the, the world, true. right? The news agent and whatever, they were closed, do you know what I mean? Well, Amazon... But what makes people more open to those stories is living in, in circumstances where they have no...